Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. So today we're going to be taking a look at the updated and ultimate Archmage guide. So, Archmage, what does it do? Well, it does magic and a lot of it. This build is made to basically keep you going continuously and to have almost infinite mana regeneration. So, what we're going to do... I'm going to show you what it does. Then I'm going to show you how it does it. So we're just going to nip out here to Scatterbone. One of the toughest areas in the game at the moment. Because it's full of those uh, dual axed rages. And uh, a couple of matrons. So we're going to go over there. Have a little look. And uh, see if we can't wipe them off the map. And with this build. There is a very little sword play but there is a little tiny bit mostly for smashing things so what we're going to do is we're going to rain death from above on them we're not going to kill all of them or stay here for ages guys I'm just showing you what sort of damage numbers you can be looking at this build and to show you how the mana bar fills up almost faster than we can use it. And of course, I'm not going down there because I'm a wizard. And I don't particularly want to get killed. So yeah. Level 30. Matrons. Rages. All that good stuff. So. How do we do it? How does it work? Well, let's take a look. So this is the tree. I'm going to go through it exactly how I built it and in the way, if you're going from level 1 upwards, I'm going to show you how to, to spend your points. So the first thing you want to start off with is Battle Mage. You want to come down here into Intelligence, Absorb, Intelligence again, Unity, Wonder Master, Sting, Spirit, and then Intelligence again. This is the first tree you want to go for because at the beginning of the game you are not going to have access to spells. If this is your first character you're not going to have access to be able to make eternal spells or any spells for that matter. So the wand is the first thing you want to go for. But once you've gotten the wand we're going to put a point into blink and then into emergency blink which then allows us to dodge in quite a cool manner and it also allows us to dodge when we're stunned which is the big thing now once you've got these two routes done we're going to head over here and we're going to go straight into wizard we're going to be picking up spirit into this is the way quick charge quick charge is a keystone ability in this in this uh, guide without this uh, you'd never get a spell off they're just they're just too slow without it and then from there we're going to go into spirit arsonist pyromaniac radiant aura and then sun aura now this is going to be a lot of where your passive damage comes from especially when you're in the shroud and you're being swarmed by the little scarab bugs this is just going to wipe them out for you and also, when you're in the Shroud, finding something a lot bigger, a lot more dangerous, this is going to give you a lot of passive damage while you're dodging around to help you take that down. We're not grabbing the Spirit Node here because we don't need that much Spirit. Because we've already, we're already going to be sitting at about 13 with this build. And then we're going to go into Intelligence, Wizard, Chain Hit, Mass Destruction, and then the Intelligence Node at the end. I mean, if I had enough points, I would probably stick two points into Thunder and Lightning to increase the damage of the shock hits from this. But at the moment, we don't. But with the next update and the level increase, that's probably where we're going to go. But for now, we're doing that. And now you've got another way to go before we have a little bit of a choice. You could almost do this before Wizard if you really wanted to, if you were struggling. But I would do this after Wizard if you can. We're coming down the healer tree for intelligence, healer, healer 2, intelligence, water aura, and waters of life. Now this is what's going to keep you alive. 
because you're a wizard, you're very, very squishy. Now these two nodes are going to passively heal you continuously. So all that damage you're taking, this is just going to soak it up. You're still going to take a hit, but this is going to patch you almost instantly. So as long as you've got enough health to survive the initial hit, this is going to keep you going. Now from here, you can either go into the trickster tree or into the tank tree. I would suggest the tank tree, but it's completely up to you. So for the tank tree, we're going to be taking constitution, shiny plates, heavy plates, constitution again, tower and warden, skipping on the strength tree because we do not need strength, taking constitution, then earth aura, and then into thick skin. So this is going to pump your health and your defense is up massively. So these two nodes here are going to give you a lot more armor. And this is going to give you a flat 10% damage reduction. So with, with the tank tree and the healer tree, this is going to be your massive defense. Because we're going to be using wizard armor throughout all of this. I've seen a lot of guides saying that you should be wearing soldier armor. No, you're missing far too much magical crit and magical damage, staff damage, wand damage. You're handicapping yourself by doing that. So once you finish in the tank tree, we're coming up here to Trickster. We'll grab Spirit. Counter Strike. This is a very good ability. Intelligence, Spirit. Be gone. We're not going to be using this that much, but you know we need it to get through here. Then we're grabbing Spirit, Intelligence, Terror. Now this is what we want from the Trickster tree. And then Arcane Concentration. So Terror is going to be what's going to keep you alive again because it's going to stun almost anything all of the time. It's It's got a quite a high proc rate, especially if you pump up your crit. And this is why I'm also saying you should not wear soldier armor because you want magical crit on your gear to proc this and all the other things. Because with this, anything big enough that's trying to chill on you, you're going to stun it every time you crit. And also, you want Chain Hit, Mass Destruction to crit as well. So with this, we're just going to be farming those crits, doing massive AoE damage and keeping whatever we're firing at locked down. And then last but not least, you don't have to come this way, but I went this way because I, uh, just, I like the uh, utility of it. Picking up one tab of Endurance into Runner and then into Double Jump. Double jump is really good for getting around, exploring, doing all that great stuff. So this skill tree is not 100% finished. I'm still missing a few of the uh, shroud roots sticking around. I've done all the elixir wells. As you can see, I've hit most of them, but one or two are still evading me. So I'll have to keep an eye out for them. If you do manage to find them and get the full 114 points, pretty much stick them wherever you want. You could even go into a little bit more Endurance and Wanderlust to give you some more stamina. Or if you wanted to, you could do what I suggested before, which is uh, put it in Thunder and Lightning to increase the damage off of Chain Hit and Mass Destruction. Completely up to you with that. It's just how you fancy spending them. So, gearing. What are we looking at? So, for the gear, we'll go over the Armour and Rings first. We want the Shroud Weaver. There is a video up on the channel showing you exactly how to get the Shroud Weaver. This is the best staff in the game. At time of recording, of course, uh, when the next update comes out and the level increases, there will be better staffs. But for now, this is the best staff in the game. As for our shield, we're using the Ethereal Plane. This is mostly for when we're using the wand. But if we do have to get pushed into melee, we've also got it then. Of course, we're using the improved grappling hook and the ghost glider. There is also videos on the channel telling you how to get the ghost glider. And as for the rings, I'm using a ring of mana with 14 mana and 4 mana regeneration and the ring of rapicity. Now, this ring is massively broken. This is what is giving us almost eternal mana regeneration. Because it's not 20% mana regeneration, it's actually 20. So as you can see here, this is 4. This is not percentile. This is a flat 20 mana regeneration. This ring is broken. So until this is fixed, this is the best ring in the game for you. 
There are guides on the channel as well, uh, how you can get these. But I will show you right here, just so you don't have to go digging around. Because you can watch them if you want, but... I ground it here. I put a fire here. And I went to Scatterbone and the Sun Temple. I found it in the silver chests. And you get there by going from the Ancient Spire and running all the way around. Do put down a fireplace because you will die. This place is not pleasant. But for the exact locations of these chests, please do go look at my uh, looting uh, farming videos. It will show you exactly where they are and how to get around them. So, for the armor, we are using the Elder set. Again, my farming videos can show you exactly where to find all this. And we're using the Elder set because we want that magical critical strike chance and the, and the strike damage, the health and mana, the increased magical damage, more mana regen, and even more mana regen. This is how we are basically staying just ahead of our mana regen so we can keep firing and it regens faster than we can use it almost. Now for the weapons, as I said we're using this staff, the Shroud Weaver, but what else are we using? So currently I'm using two Luminous Wands I do try and go for ones with fire damage on it, just because it's buffed up through our skill tree. Or you can go with a scorching wand, which has more mana regen on it. But do you remember these ones are going to be regening mana anyway, because of unity. Damaging enemies with ones is a 24% chance to recover 2% mana. But you can always go for a wand with some leech on it if you want to. I just find the luminous ones are a little bit better. I do try and always go for fire based ones because this is a fire based build and that is buffing up our magical damage. But you do also want to bring a melee weapon along with you for smashing boxes. Because when you're doing any exploring or looting, you want something that can just smash through boxes that you don't really care about. You don't want to be wasting your wand. And you don't want to be just randomly firing off fireballs and wasting your mana. Not that it's really wasted, because we've got almost all of it. But yeah, this is how uh, this is how I build the Archmage. I've been having a lot of fun with this build. This is my most powerful character. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun to play. I usually use just the Eternal Fireball, but you can use the Acid uh, spray as well. I don't really feel like it's that necessary because the Eternal Fireball is the workhorse of this build. It does a hell of a lot of damage. Very quick charge speed. And it has an AoE strike on it. And as you can see, give it a second or two and our mana is full again. So we don't have to carry around a million mana potions. I would, however, carry a few health potions just to uh, use in an emergency. And any sort of meat that you want, just to buff your health a little bit more. If you're super into cooking and stuff, and want to carry around the best food... Well, let's have a look. At the moment, I've just got the mushroom omelette. So, this is what I use when I want to. But you can use whatever the hell you want. You could use the constitution food for it more health. But I'm very lazy, I don't tend to. But there you go, folks. The Archmage. I, I really hope you enjoy it as much as I do, because I, I absolutely love this build. And if you do, please like, subscribe, ring that little bell for notifications. It really does help us out. And if you fancy it, check out the membership area, where it gives you access to the members-only Discord. And it puts you into the monthly prize draw, where you can win some lovely fancy prizes, which are hand-painted models by the Broadside Gaming team, along with custom stickers and a few other bits and pieces that are yet to be revealed. So if that sounds good, go check it out. And again, thank you very much for watching, folks. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, I'll see you later.